everyone and welcome back to my course on Microsoft Teams. Section one is done, it is out the way. We are now kicking off with section two. And in this section, we're really gonna explore all of the elements of creating a team and starting conversations. So creating a team is really the fundamental first step when it comes to working in Teams. Now you'll see that currently in that left-hand menu bar, I'm clicked on the Teams icon. Now this is where it will display any teams that you've either created yourself or teams that you've joined. So currently I just have one team, it's called Train IT Now. I created this team and I also created three separate channels underneath my team. Now we're going to talk more about channels in other modules, but in this module, I really just want to focus on how you create a new team and also how you can add members to that team, whether they are internal within your organization or external members. So let's start out with creating a team from scratch. If you jump onto this page, what you'll see is at the bottom, you have a little link here that says join or create a team. So this seems like a good place to start. Let's click it. And here we go. We now have two different options. We can create a team or we can join a team using a code. Now in this particular module, we're all about creating a team. So I'm gonna select create team. Now again, we're going through this sort of wizard style dialog box. We have two options. We can build a team from scratch or we can create a team from an existing Microsoft or Office 365 group. Now, if you've never come across Office 365 groups before, they're sort of similar to Teams in a way. It's a group that you can set up and you can do it from within your Outlook. You can add people to that group and you can share things amongst those people. So what it's saying here is if you already have a group in Office 365, you could use that as the basis for your new team. So when I might use that is if I have a group that I've created in my Outlook, and maybe I've added 10 different people to it, 10 people who are working on a specific project, instead of starting or creating a new team from scratch, if I want a very similar team, I could build off of that Office 365 group that I already have. It's gonna cut down on the amount of work I need to do. Now in this case, I'm going to build a team from scratch. You then need to specify what kind of team this is going to be. And if you remember in a previous module, I did briefly talk about this. The team that I already have created, so my Train IT Now team, I created that as an org-wide team. And you'll see that org-wide is one of the options that we have here. So what that basically means is that everyone in the organization automatically joins. So nobody has to be invited. I don't have to add members. It's a team that everyone is automatically a part of if they are within my organization. So essentially, if they share the, the same domain. Now we do have two other options. We have private and we have public. Now with a private team, people need permission to join. So private teams can only be joined if the team owner adds them to that particular team. Private teams also can't be searched for unless you've made that team discoverable. So if you want somebody to be able to find the team within Teams, but then request permission to join, then you need to make sure the private team is discoverable. Otherwise, it won't even appear in the search results. Public teams, on the other hand, are visible to everyone and they can be joined without getting the approval from the team owner. So again, which one of these you select is really determined by the kind of team that you're creating and the kind of work you're gonna be doing within those team channels. Now in this example, we're gonna select public and I now need to give my team a name. So I'm gonna call this team Northwind Traders. And you can always add a description. Once you're happy with it, click on the Create button. It now goes away and it creates the team. 
And you can just see in the screen behind, it has actually created that team and added it to my teams list. But I'm now being asked to add members to Northwind Traders. And it says start typing a name, distribution list or mail enabled security group to add to your team. So I'm going to add two of my team members to this team. So the first person I'm going to add is Adam. And you can see that because he's part of my organization, he automatically pops up in my list. I'm also going to add Ben. And those are the only two people that I'm going to add at this stage. And I'm going to click the Add button. So now I have both of those listed as members and you can see you do get the option to bump up the privileges for one or both of these people. So I could make them both owners if I wanted to, which means they have full access to execute tasks, admin tasks on this particular team. Now at the moment, I'm happy with keeping them both as members. And I'm going to say close. And there we go. I very quickly created a new team and I can now see that in my teams list. What you'll also notice is that teams has automatically created a channel for me. So general is a channel that will be created every single time you create a team. Now, you don't have to keep this channel. You can go in, you can delete it, you can rename it to something more useful if you want to. But it is quite a nice starting point. Now, just so you have an idea as to what happens on the other side, both Adam and Ben will receive an alert in their activity area, which will let them know that I've added them to this new team. And they will also both see that Northwind Traders team appear in their teams list, just like it is in mine. So they can then jump in, start having conversations, meetings, sharing files. So very, very straightforward. Another thing to note is that now I've set up this particular team. If you look up in the right hand corner, you can see there it's telling me that this is an organization. Channel content is accessible to everyone in your organization. And that's because I set this up as a public team. Now, with each team you create, you have these three dots next to your team, which will give you some more options in a drop down list. And there's lots of really, really useful things in here. And we're going to go through a lot of these in the following modules. But for now, I just want to show you again very quickly how to create a different type of team. We're going to create a private team this time. So I'm going to create another team, but this one's going to be slightly different. It's going to be a private team. I'm going to show you how you can again add internal members, but also how you can add guests or external members outside of your organization. So let's jump back down to join or create a team. We're going to say create team. I'm going to build a team from scratch and it's going to be a private team. I'm going to call it leadership team and I'm not going to add a description at this point and I'm going to say create. You can see that team's been created just behind and it's now asking me to add members to leadership team. So again, I'm going to add Adam, who is within my organization and also Ben, who is also within my organization. But now what happens if I want to add someone outside of my organization? So I'm just going to use an old email address of mine. I'm going to say add, but you can see here it hasn't really appeared to work. It hasn't added it into the list and my add button is also grayed out. So I can't click to try and add that again. Now, this is something really important. If you are struggling to add guests to your teams, it might be that the setting in the background hasn't been enabled. So if you are the owner of a team, what I would suggest you do is jump into the admin area. So I'm going to show you very quickly. Let's close this down. Let's go up to our application launcher. I'm going to go to Office 365 
and I'm going to select the admin option. Now there's a whole load of stuff in here. It's a little bit difficult to navigate if you're not sure what you're looking for, but I'm going to expand users and I'm gonna say guest users. And the first thing you'll see at the top here is allow everyone to collaborate remotely by giving your guests access in Teams. Guest access in Teams may take up to 24 hours. So you need to click on this link to allow guest access. So currently it's telling me that I'm not allowing guest access, which is why I'm struggling to add someone outside of my organization. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toggle this button to on, I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna say save. Now, as you can see there, it can take two to 24 hours for these changes to take effect. So if I jump back to my leadership team, if I want to go in and try and add that member again, what I can do is click on these three dots and select add member. And that's going to take me back to that screen that we're pretty familiar with. Now, it's only been a few seconds, so I'm pretty sure that it's not going to have updated in order for me to add this person in. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to this later when we're doing something else and just add this person into the leadership team. But I really wanted to highlight there just that little option that you need to turn on in the admin area. Now the final thing I want to show you here in relation to creating teams is the final option that we haven't discussed yet. And that is creating a Microsoft team based off of an Office 365 group. So I'm quickly going to jump across to my Outlook. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom of our inbox, you can see here I have something called groups. And as I said, if you've never used this before, you can create various different groups, add people to those groups, have conversations, so on and so forth. And you can see I have a group set up in here called the Friday Drinks Crew. Now it might be that I want to essentially convert this into a Microsoft team. And you can see here, I have five members of this particular group. There's myself, Adam, Ben, Ryan, and Vicky. So a really quick and easy way of me being able to create this team is to utilize this group as a template kind of. So let's jump back to Microsoft Teams and click on Create Team. So this time we're going to say create from an existing Office 365 group or team. I'm going to select Office 365 group and it's going to pull through all of the groups that I have set up. I only have one, it's the Friday Drinks Crew and I'm going to say Create. And there we go, it hasn't asked me to add any members because I already have members in this team. And if I want to view those members, if I click on those three dots, I can say manage team. And it's going to show me all of those people who are part of that Office 365 group. So it's a, a very efficient way of creating a team that you already have set up as a group. You'll also see in this screen, we have an add member button in the top corner, which makes it super quick to go in and add any additional members. Phew, so that is it on creating teams. We've seen how to create a private team, a public team, and also how to convert an Office 365 group to a team and add members. In the next module in section two, I'm going to show you how you can join an existing team that you didn't create. So please join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.